Today is the celebration of Corpus Christi, one of the most glorious feast days of the year because it is in honor and in gratitude, Eucharist, you might say in Greek, for God's greatest gift to us. We will honor our Lord in the Holy Sacrifice, of course, at the end of Mass after communion, with a simple indoor procession where you may remain in place, but I will bring the Eucharist in procession so we can adorn it more closely uh, throughout the church before we go home this evening. When I say, when I speak about the purpose of everything, because it is the purpose of everything, it can be applied to everything. And I think nothing more so than the Holy Eucharist. For those of you who may not have been here before, although it's been a year now, so I'm hoping we all know this, so just uh, 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 affirm me that we all are getting this by telling me that the purpose of everything is union with God through Christ in his physical body and the Okay. Other mass are a little bit louder, but that's okay. At least I know the servant got it. Alright. If that's the purpose of everything, then obviously the Eucharist is related to that. The Catechism says that the Eucharist is the source and the summit of the Christian life. Excellent, sorry. The other sacraments, and indeed all ecclesial ministries and works of the Apostolate, are bound up with the Eucharist and are oriented toward it. For in the Blessed Eucharist is contained the whole spiritual good of the Church, namely Christ. Again, the beginning it says the Eucharist is the source and summit, that is, where everything flows from and to which everything flows. And I would add to that source, summit, and summary, because everything is connected to the Holy Eucharist. And I want to offer just a brief reflection this evening on that, making these points as we reflect on this gift. The Most Holy Trinity, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If the Blessed Eucharist is the sacramental presence of Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and the divine nature cannot be separated from the divine persons, then if Christ's divinity is present, then so is the Father and so is the Holy Spirit. The whole Trinity is present in the Blessed Sacrament. Creation is associated with this, because this sacrament is given to us by creative matter. The bread and wine which are consecrated, the substance is changed. The Eucharist also reminds us, being made of creative matter, that the entire purpose of creation is this covenant union with God and man, which we heard about in both the reading uh, and the gospel. The moral life and the law are tied in with the Holy Eucharist as well, because if it's all about union, part of our union, part of living our union, is having willing what God wills, thy will be done. Desiring to do and to love what he desires for us to do and how to love. And this is why mortal sin keeps us from approaching the Holy Eucharist because in mortal sin we have willingly separated ourselves from that union. The incarnation obviously is, is a key to understanding the Holy Eucharist because in the second person of the most blessed trinity, taking human nature, he now has a body and blood to give us in Holy Communion, and to be present in our tabernacles and adored on our altars. The Blessed Virgin Mary. Someone might be surprised at that association, but it's so obvious they shouldn't be, because it's Our Lady, and only Our Lady, that gives Jesus a body which, with which we are fed. She cares for us as a mother, and not only consents to give us her son from the cross, but also to feed us with the Holy Eucharist. The Paschal Mystery of Christ's Passion, Death, Resurrection, and Ascension are all summarized in the Eucharist. By means of the Holy Mass, we are mystically participating in these mysteries. And Christ, who is now seated in glory at the right hand of the Father, has promised to be with us until the end of time. And this is the most important way that he does that. We see in the Holy Eucharist the Church, because again, Church is the mystical body of Christ, and it is in our reception of the physical body of Christ that our union with Christ, our initiation into the Church, is completed, and therefore our union with our brothers and sisters. Our union with our brothers and sisters in Christ is in the mystical body, and therefore in Christ. 
course, the sacraments are also, uh, the epitome of the sacraments is the Blessed Sacrament, because as the Catechism pointed out, all the other sacraments are encounters with the grace of Christ and Christ and his ministers, but it is in the Eucharist that we encounter Christ himself. Prayer, of course, is part of our union, the elevation of the heart and mind to God. Prayer, of course, uh, is uh, best when it's involving the Eucharist, whether that be our thanksgiving after communion, when we have physically united with our Lord as well as spiritually, but also, of course, the best time spent in prayer is in front of his Eucharistic face in the Blessed Sacrament. When it comes to the spiritual combat, we need protection, we need strength in our battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. And this comes to us from the grace of the Holy Eucharist. And the closer that we are to Christ, the more union we are with Him, the more difficult it will be for us to be led astray. I don't say attack, because the closer we are to Christ, the more we'll be attacked. But we will be stronger and more able to resist the closer to Him that we are. And finally, the eschaton, the last things, the end of all things. The purpose of our existence in this world is to know, love, and serve God so as to be happy with Him in the next. And the Holy Eucharist then helps us to know, love, and serve God. It's already a foretaste of that nuptial banquet of heaven, which is what we refer to when I'm showing you the Holy Eucharist before Holy Communion. Just as the Holy Sacrifice for Mass is our participation now, sacramentally, in the worship of heaven, which we hope one day to participate in, of the angels and saints, to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, for all the ages of eternity.